One of the great things about being a wildly successful YouTube content creator is sometimes you get to spend over an hour filming a video only to find when you start to edit that the sound got corrupted and the whole thing is trash. So I, uh, I already made this video and I made this cover, but that video turned out to be useless, so let's try again. So sometimes I make a cover for a piece of audio equipment. I don't really like to talk about it a lot in videos because I really don't like making them and I don't charge enough money for them for it to be that profitable. It's just kind of a thing I do. In any event, uh, someone that I made a cover for recently contacted me and asked if I could make covers for some of his other audio equipment, a turntable, an amp, and some speakers. Uh, so that's what I'm doing today, and I thought this would be a good opportunity to show kind of how I go about making a cover for something that I don't have with me. I don't have any way to test fit it, I can't take my own measurements, I have to go based on the measurements provided to me. And there's some danger in that. I try to be clear with people that I'll make the cover to the measurements that they give me, and if their measurements weren't right, that's on them. But um, anyway, I just thought I'd show you how I make something to fit a thing that I don't have. This is a cover for one of the two speakers, so in this video we'll make the second one. So I've already cut out the top piece. Uh, when I cut the other one, I cut both top pieces at the same time. The finished dimensions for this top piece are going to be 11 inches by 8 and 3 quarters inches. And in order to achieve that, I'm adding a half inch for a seam allowance on all four sides of this. So that means the piece that I cut is 12 inches by 9 and 3 quarters inches. When I'm cutting pieces that need to be fairly accurate, I like to start with a, a clean edge. So I'm just using a framing square and my ruler to strike a straight line. And that'll help ensure that my rectangular pieces are rectangles and not rhombi. In order to save myself a lot of trouble, first I gotta plug this thing in. Hold on. Okay. In order to save myself a lot of trouble finishing the raw edges of this fabric to prevent them from fraying, I'm gonna be using this hot knife. This is a Sailrite Edge hot knife. Sailrite didn't sponsor this video and I don't have any affiliation with them, I just like this thing. Uh, there are other brands of hot knife on the market, but I like this one. And sorry about any noise you're hearing. I've got my overhead door open in the back and a door open in the front to get some ventilation going through here because the fumes from cutting this uh, synthetic fabric might be dangerous to breathe. Uh, might be a good idea to wear a respirator or have uh, some other safety measures in place. And I've just got this steel ruler underneath the fabric so I don't burn my table. So I need to cut out these four upright pieces. This is 17 inches tall. I'm going to add a half inch at the top for a seam allowance and a half inch at the bottom to do a single fold hem. Because I cut this with a hot knife and don't have to worry about fraying a single fold is enough and that simplifies the operation for me. Otherwise I could do a double fold or put binding on it or some other method to protect the raw edge. So that means I need two pieces 18 inches by 9 and 3 quarters inches and two pieces 18 inches by 12 inches. I'm sewing this project on my Thompson PWZ 500. Uh, if you're making a cover like this out of any similar, this is 400D nylon pack cloth. 
Uh, you could sew this with virtually any sewing machine. I just feel like using this one. Uh, for my subscribers and longtime viewers, I have the Sailrite Workhorse servo motor powering this machine. I've promised a review of that motor. Uh, it's kind of on hold right now. I, I don't think this is how I want to use that motor. It's a great motor. Um, I think I have different ideas for how I want to use uh, the portable walking foot machines that I have. Uh, but I think I have an idea for that workhorse motor. Uh, if you're curious about the motor, it's a great motor. Um, but at the moment, I don't have enough to, to do a review on it. But that's what I'm using in case you want to see how it works. Anyway, the first sewing step I'm going to do is to do the single fold hem. I wanted a half inch hem. That means on the wrong side of the fabric, I need to draw a line one inch up from the bottom. The reason to do it one inch is if I fold to that line, that'll give me a half inch. I could take measurements of one inch all the way across and draw a line, but I happen to know that this ruler is an inch wide. So that lets me cheat a little bit. One thing I want to point out here, I'm not building a spacecraft. This doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but where my cut is a little bit jagged here, I'm just measuring from the line. So I, I lined the ruler up on that blue line instead of on the edge of the fabric. That variation will be sewn down and you won't see it. Again, it, it probably doesn't matter anyway. Uh, if it were off by an inch, that would be one thing, but that little bit doesn't matter. Now all I have to do is fold the bottom to meet that line and that will reduce the overall length by a half inch and give me a nice clean edge on the bottom. After the first row of stitching, I'm just going to put a second row parallel to it. Uh, a double needle machine would make this look a lot neater and straighter, but I don't have one. So I'm just going to line the outer toe of the foot on that first line of stitches and try to keep it as straight as I can. So I've hemmed the bottom of all the side pieces. Next, I want to join the side pieces to the top piece. So as I said, I'm going to use a half inch seam allowance to sew this together. And I could use some kind of magnetic seam guide or a seam guide that screws into the bed of the machine. But instead, I'm going to mark a half inch seam allowance on my pieces. So to keep them straight, I need to baste them together. I could do that with basting tape or pins or clips but I'm just going to use staples. And again, rather than marking a half inch at different spots and drawing a straight line, I have this piece of aluminum. You can just buy this at a hardware store and it's a half inch wide, so I can just use it. I also want to start and stop sewing about a half inch from the edge. That'll just make the corners neater because I won't have to fold in a sewn seam into the corner. So. I'm going to use the same aluminum and make a mark a half inch from each end. The servo motor really excels itself at uh, slowly approaching a point where I want to stop. I'm going to go ahead and remove the staples now just so I don't puncture my hand with them later. These staples are actually really kind of sharp. I just need to repeat that for the other three sides. Now that all the side pieces are joined to the top piece, I can sew the side seams together. And again, I'm using a half inch seam allowance. And again, to keep the seam straight and even, I'm just going to baste it with staples. I know that many of you hate the idea of using staples, and that's okay. You don't have to. 
So I was just going to sew this and I realized that there's a little bit of misalignment on the bottom. And that's really where it's going to be most visible. I'm going to straighten that out before I sew this. Okay, so technically this could be done, uh, and this might seem a little bit weird and inefficient, but it works for me. Uh, maybe I'll think of a better way, and if you have a different opinion, by all means, post it in the comment section. Uh, so I have this half-inch seam allowance, and it's a little bit bulky, so now I'm going to cut that off uh, and reduce it down in size. Now, you might be thinking, well, why not just sew it with a smaller seam allowance? Uh, yeah, I could do that. It would be a little bit more complicated. For one thing, I don't have a quarter inch straight edge to use uh, like that half inch piece of aluminum. So that might add some time making the edge or, or using some other method for keeping the seam allowance consistent. Using a half inch seam allowance just makes the math work easier and it's, I don't know, I just, it works easiest for me. Uh, the amount of material I'm losing is insignificant and I have a lot of that material. so. Uh, the other thing is I could have just scissor cut all of these edges except for the bottom edge that I hemmed a single fold hem into because I'm going to hot knife it now. So the fact that I hot knifed it earlier is kind of irrelevant. But again, I'd have to keep track of which edge was going to be the bottom and I don't, know, I don't think it would save that much time to scissor cut it over just using the hot knife. So that's how I'm doing it. So all I have to do now is trim off about half of the seam allowance, again using the hot knife so that this stuff doesn't fray and that'll be a much less bulky seam. Okay, so I've trimmed down the seam allowances just to make it less bulky. Now I can turn the cover out. And now I just want to confirm that it's the correct measurements. So it's supposed to be 11 by 8 and 3 quarter inches by 17 inches high. It's going to measure from seam to seam. And that's dead on 11 inches, dead on 8 and 3 quarters, and right on the line 17 inches. As long as the measurements I was given are correct, then these covers should fit the speakers perfectly. So that's how I approach making covers for items that I don't have based on measurements and making sure that those measurements come out right. There's probably dozens of ways to do this. This is just the way that I'm doing it right now. If you like this video, clicking the thumbs up button really helps. If you're not a subscriber, I'd love it if you would subscribe to my channel. If you really like what I'm doing, you can help support me by buying merchandise from my Teespring store. Uh, you should see a shelf below the video or a link in the description. The revenue I make from this channel and from sales of merchandise is a very, very tiny portion of my income, but it does help defray the cost of some of the expenses of things that I use to make these videos, like materials and sewing machines. As a matter of fact, you guys just helped me buy a new machine, and you'll see that in an upcoming video. Well, new to me. Anyway. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching.